that I'm feeling well enough to do more recording on camera, uh, it's time to get back to some book reviews and get caught up on some of that stuff. So, one of the previous books, picks for the Sword and Laser Book Club, the one for January, was Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. And it's a book that I think would have worked better as an October book pick. Not that it's a bad book, but it's... It's definitely much more of a horror story. It's a story that features ser a serial killer as an antagonist, but one and one who can move independently of the rest of us in the time stream. Um, only this one can go back and forth as opposed to um, just moving in the same linear direction as the rest of us, but never aging like the killer in Nosferatu by uh, Joe Hill. It's an interesting story, though, though I don't quite know if it's my cup of tea, but not for reasons I think the author intended. The main protagonist of the novel is Kirby Mizrahi. She's a girl who, in 1989 Chicago, is attacked by a serial killer, Harper Curtis, and is nearly killed but left for dead. What Kirby doesn't know and spends the course of the novel investigating is that Harper is a time traveler from the 1930s who steps into a magic house that wants him to murder the titular Shining Girls, girls with potential throughout the time stream. Kirby is not the first of these murders, and we see others of them throughout the novel, all from the perspectives of the victims. However, in 1993, having survived the attempt in, um, in 1989, she's become a reporter and tries to investigate her own attempted murder so she can try and st ultimately stop the chain of killings. The part that works the best, in my opinion, is how Bukes make sure to center the titular girls in the story. We get each of their individual narratives who they are where they were what their goals in life were and see them fleshed out as characters before moving to when harper murders or attempts to murder in the case of kirby um these women there's no sense of 30 minutes with jerks or anything like that none of these women feel like cardboard cutouts they are all sympathetic they're all people with lives life goals wants desires hopes loves and the all of which, except for Kirby, are end up being eventually brought to a tragic end by Harper. And Harper is, to a degree, I think, the weakness of the story. We get a little too much of him, and what we get is a little too extra. By way of explanation, um, one of the criticisms I see made frequently uh, um, of the Game of Thrones novels and other works of dark fantasy is the overuse of rape and sexual violence point being made is that yes rape and sexual violence are unfortunately things that happen in the really real world um the world that exists in your novel though even if it is set in our world or one similar to it is a crafted world so the use of sexual violence unless handled carefully risks engaging in unnecessary roughness on the reader now and in particular, also a necessary roughness in a gratuitous way. That's that's the particular cause of the complaint. It's not just you're having rape in the book, but rape for the sake of rape. Perhaps having it come across as being fetishistic. Harper, thankfully, does not rape any of the Shining Girls. This doesn't mean he doesn't get sexual pleasure, though, out of killing them. In the chapters that focus on this perspective, he explicitly uh, Bukes explicitly describes from his point of view the, not to put too fine a point on it, arousal he gets at the prospect of the murder. And at one point he is described as traveling in time to a different period where, um, from where the murder was afterwards and going and um, self-gratifying. I'm glad there aren't actual rapes. And I appreciate that when the mention comes up of how he gets his rocks off, is brief. And yes, there are people like this in real life. And I understand that the author is trying to get across a degree of how this sort of misogynist attitude exists in serial killers and people who prey on women. I do also think, as something that readers, particularly ones who legitimately could face being triggered, having a PTSD trigger from this, um, 
would might consider that this could go a little too far and make a note point, make this for a, a note point. I can't continue in the story. Um, so I'm not going to say it was excessive and unnecessary, but I will say, uh, like I was, I say that my discomfort that I felt was intentional. But felt like it was intended from the author's perspective. I don't think that if, if, if you're someone who would have a pro problem with this, where you would not continue, be able to continue because of traumas that you experienced that, that I don't think the author necessarily wanted that. I think the author's intention was this is to be reflective of attitudes that exist in the real world with the intent being of to provide when Kirby over ultimately overcomes Harper to provide a sense of catharsis. But I think there's a point where when you get like if you go too close to this line and i clearly tell you that the fact that rape doesn't happen in the book is that she's aware of this line and trying not to go too far over it so that people who have experienced this level of anxiety or trauma or fear can have the opportunity to have the catharsis um that it is possible to get to go it, it gets risky is what i will say and i think and I don't know from my, my, my own experience, experiences are not such that I don't, that I have not thankfully experienced that something that would set me up, that would put me at risk for that because sexual assault happens to guys too. Um, but I do think that I, I tell she's trying to come close to that line without going over. I don't know how well she succeeded for someone who would experience that. This is definitely a book like some authors put put trigger warnings at the first page of their book or like the introduction to the book. Say, hey, here's what's coming in the book. Here's contact tag. Just I'm not saying that you should. Where they're, where they're saying we're not. She the author saying I'm not saying you shouldn't read this, but you should be prepared. And in the same way, I feel it, it bears mentioning that when reading this, that if that's something that could potentially be a problem for you, if you just ran into it, that it's good to be prepared. And so that's something to keep an eye out for. Like I do think the story was intense and exciting in the investigative portions. The climax is well done. The entire process of Kirby investigating this and coming to the realization that holy crap, I'm dealing with someone who can travel through time and having to deal with the implications of that, both in terms of how these murders are happening and also in terms of thinking about how she would have, how she would take this guy on um, is significant. And like that, that's a, that's in just in terms of mystery and horror and that sort of thing. That's something I rarely see come up often. And the fact that it centers the women so very well, um, is also legitimately praiseworthy. If this sort of horror mystery novel feels like your cup of tea, I'd recommend picking it up. I don't know if this is something I'll necessarily go back to for a reread. But to a certain extent, that's less because I did I didn't think it was a good book, and more the book laid out what it was doing very well, and such that it doesn't necessarily work. I I, I don't feel like I would get as much out of it with a reread as I would with some other mystery novels where they keep the identity of the murder and that sort of thing as a mystery to the reader. So you have the advantage of coming back in later 
with that knowledge. Links to where you can pick up Shining Girls are in the doobly-doo. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 